What's up, it's Maddie. I'm here to talk about my Ender for GT Sift. So we went to Louisville because of the Source Distillery. They have a really amazing facility there and for you know BMX products, shoes, parts, all the stuff. And we were offered to come ride there. It's kind of like GT's little thing inside the, the distillery. I think the first day and a half, we stayed with the indoor park and got some clips in that. And we decided to go ride street. And then we get to this this dam looking thing. I forget what it's called in the BMX world. The bump or something, I forget what it's called. Some people have commented like it's the bump in Louisville. Honestly, didn't even see the ledge at the, at the beginning. I was more focused on the bikini model over on the side doing her poses during her uh, photo shoot, whatever she was doing for a fitness competition. But we're riding, having fun, and then all of a sudden Conway is like, yo, Maddie, 270 foof that ledge. <laughs> it's like, what? You know, a lot of people understand your abilities sometimes more than you do and or you can't see them and they can see them. And so thankfully Conway saw that and I got up on the ledge. I don't bring a bike up there unless I'm ready. So I brought, got up on the ledge by myself and just kind of looked at it and you know, I'm talking about I'm getting sweaty hands again. So like sweaty hands, got the hair in the back of the neck popping up, you know, you get all the feels and you know, I just just like grab my bike let's go do this so in the past man when i get up on something like that i know what i'm doing i know what i got to do to bring myself up to that confidence point if if i get up on a ledge it's like 45 seconds and i'm down so i wasn't too worried about that but i'm up here on this ledge i got my bike and you know this is the first major thing since i came out of the hospital from being diagnosed with crohn's disease i lost like 35 pounds total so i was like a tiny little thing and i built back some muscle i'm now four months after diagnosis i'm on this ledge i feel great i feel strong i'm up to 200 pounds you know i feel good I had like a little weird thing in my shoulder so i was kind of worried about that if i like right when i pulled up if it would kind of twinge and send me off my my focused path but i'm up there and my confidence is wavering hard and I started to kind of make some weird like animal noises where I wasn't really familiar with that side of myself. Like I got really teary eyed um, thinking how excited I'm going to be when I pull this and also what if I crash and eat shit? This is like my first big thing back. Like what am I doing? Should I even risk it? <clears throat> I remember even calling down to Conway like, we can come back tomorrow, like, it's all good. Like, and he's like, nah, dude, you're here now. Like, you got this. And I knew the rain could, could come in the next day. So, you know, all those little extra pressures. And I think it was eight minutes total of me being up there until I totally went down. You know, I was like, ah, like screaming and tears in my eyes. And I didn't want to have anything to block my vision with what I was doing. So I had to like go through it and like shake my hands out and, you know, I did all my kissing the bike frame, kissing the ledge, all the stuff. And one, I wasn't feeling 100% myself. And I also wasn't trying to just first trip out of the gate, let's go gnarly. You know, we still had what, like two more days there. And if you break it down into what it really is, it's like a 90 degree turn to a Fufanu and then a 270 turn all the way around. So it's like a full 360. And I hadn't really ever done that. I'd only done like the 90 to 180. But during that fall, like it's just another 90 degrees, you know, and you can kind of land a little heavy on the bump and then roll down, which is what I ended up doing. So thank you, Conway. He, he knows what you're capable of. You know, he's seen you ride, he's watched you. So he knows what you're capable of. And he just, he ran back up and he was kind of like, what are you thinking? I'm like, man, my shoulder, like if like right when I go to hop, this thing's weird. I'm going to like probably miss the stall because it'll throw me off. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I know. He's like, but you know, you got that stall. And I was like, of course, that stall's no problem. Brakes are good. Everything's good. I got the stall. And he's like, just, just land a little bit like right here. And then you're just going to roll in. It's going to be cake. So him having the patience, it was nice, you know, because I was getting in my head with how much time it takes. I was taking too long in the world of grab the opportunity when it's there, this opportunity has gone by like 15 times now. The light was dimming, the sun was going down. I believe the lights even came on and I was just like, oh my God, I have so many factors pushing me to do this. <laughs> when you're at that spot, you just gotta identify what you're afraid of and then realize, is that a serious thing? Is it really that serious to be afraid of it? Okay, no, that's not, no, that's not, I've got this. 
and you have to trust yourself. If you listen to the podcast, I'll just speed forward. First moment in my life where I felt the invincibility wear off and I was terrified. I didn't think I'd ever be able to ride a bike like that again. And I just like got the muscle. I got the weight. I started feeling like an animal again and <clears throat> started riding, started feeling good about riding. And it was like, bam, here comes this trip. And of course I had to take it. So yeah, in, in the whole end of everything, going to Louisville, I had no idea there was going to be a banger in there. No clue at all. I mean, even going to the spot where it happened prior to getting up on the ledge, there's no bangers happening here. It was like, this is going to be a fun day. We're going to get some clips. Cool. It is what it is. And after doing it and landing, coming down, I started getting a little choked up and I could hear Ben off to the side, like someone has a new sift ender. And that just like, someone has a new sift ender. <laughs> Yeah, that's totally what that was. I'm grateful that, that Z didn't put it entirely in there, but it's okay because I don't mind being vulnerable. I told everyone, hey, I'm going to start crying, but it's like happy tears. And there's a couple shots of me just like holding my chest and it was all probably going to get choked up again. It was just all because I'm so happy to be riding again. And BMX is something that nobody can take away from you. You have it within you and what you're capable of. And I'm just so grateful to be able to still be doing stuff on the bike. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mother fuck. Yo, that could not have looked any more fucking good. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That fuck is sick. Yeah. 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 Dude, you came down with the genius. Yeah. 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 All right. You just fucking yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 Is that like the I'm back clip? Fuck, dude. Is that it? Is that what that is? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yes! Yeah. That just happened? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go watch Sif, can you film this? Because obviously it's an emotional roller coaster over here. You guys will enjoy it. <laughs>